Desperate times call for desperate measures. And Luke Hughes will be getting the start in game three for the Devils to replace an injured Ryan Graves. What are my expectations for Luke Hughes going into his first postseason game of his career? And also, we need to talk about what's been going wrong for the Devils. I don't think it's a skill standpoint, but something else. And I think a lot of people can back me up on it. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer. That was right for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential Mia member Trey Matthews. I feel like we've seen this movie pan out before. The Devils currently trail the Carolina Hurricanes in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs, two games to none. But one of the main differences is that the New Jersey Devils are going back to their own territory, so they have a better chance of tying it up, and they're in a better circumstance than they were in round one because if you guys recall, the Devils dropped the first two games of the series and had home ice advantage, so they had to go into Madison Square Garden to tie it up. They were able to do so, but now I think this is a better circumstance for them to possibly tie it up, but it's not just the home rink advantage or non-home rink advantage. There's a lot of other factors that are not going into the New Jersey Devils' favor, and part of it is not really their fault. So we're going to talk about that a little later in the episode, and quite honestly, I'm actually glad that I waited an extra day before recording an episode because there are a lot of storylines that we need to discuss. So the first storyline we're going to talk about is Luke Hughes. Luke Hughes is finally going to make his playoff debut in game three to replace an injured Ryan Graves. And then in segment two, I'll talk about what the New Jersey Devils are sort of missing when they're going against the Carolina Hurricanes because I don't think it's a skill issue. I think there's another metric that unfortunately the Devils just don't really have on the roster quite yet. They have some of it and they have potential to get better at it, but the Carolina Hurricanes are just showcasing that skill and exposing the devil's weakness in that sort of area. And then to round it all off, we'll talk about uh, some lineup changes that I personally want to see Lindy Ruff make and also who's going to get the nod as the starting goalie for the Devils in game three, because at the time of recording, Lindy Ruff has not yet revealed who's going to get the nod in between the pipes for the Devils. So let's start with the main storyline in Luke Hughes. So like I just alluded to, Luke Hughes is going to be replacing an injured Ryan Graves because if you guys recall in game two, unfortunately Ryan Graves did get knocked into the boards by Jesper Fast. And even though Ryan Graves was able to continue on in the game uh, at the start of period number two, it's been revealed that he is going to be out with an upper body injury and he did not partake in the devil's practice. So they inserted Luke Hughes into the lineup. And then a little later, Lindy Ruff spoke with the media and revealed that Luke Hughes will in fact be starting in game three. Now, a lot of people have been pushing for this. So if you recall in the previous episode, I was discussing with devil's beat writer, Ryan Novozinski of NJ.com. And we were going back and forth. Should Ryan Grace be a healthy scratch And should Luke Hughes replace him in that sort of spot? Now, the thing about Luke Hughes is that he is a young player with a lot of potential, and he's only played in a couple regular season games for the Devils. As you guys recall, he he was a member of the University of Michigan Wolverines team that did go to the Frozen Four. Unfortunately, they did end up losing to the eventual national champions in Quinnipiac University. So as soon as they did get defeated by Quinnipiac, Luke Hughes signed his entry-level contract. He did not play in the game against the Boston Bruins. And then he was given a chance to start in the game against the Buffalo Sabres and also the Washington Capitals. Now, I had my hesitation of possibly starting Luke Hughes in the playoffs. I said I didn't foresee the Devils inserting him into the starting lineup because at the conclusion of the regular season when Luke Hughes was speaking to the media, he seemed a little skeptical himself of possibly starting in the playoffs. He said, he'll be ready to go at any given moment and that he hopes that his brother Jack and the rest of the guys do really well. So I was like, "Uh, that's not really a good sign that Luke Hughes is going to be given a chance in the playoffs. And I said, it's going to have to be either a desperation move or he's going to be replacing an injured player. Now, 
I was hoping that it was that would have been a desperation move, but given the fact how Ryan Graves has performed during the course of the playoffs, this sort of is because it's not only not only is Luke Hughes replacing an injured player, but maybe this can force Lindy Ruff to switch something up because something is not working for the Devils during these first two games. And I'll talk a little later in the episode of, of my overall takeaway from what's been happening in the first two games. But for Luke Hughes in general, my expectations for him are somewhat moderate going into game three because the fact of the matter is simply this. Luke Hughes is an offensive-minded defenseman. We saw that in the final regular season game against Washington Capitals. He was able to get an assist in regulation, and then he was able to go home the hero because, if you guys recall, he scored the final goal of the regular season for the Devils because the game went into overtime, and he was able to clinch it for the Devils in that time span, and obviously that sent shockwaves throughout the Devils' discourse. Now, like I said, Luke Hughes has a lot of potential on the offensive side of things, but the area that he needs to work on is his defense because he gets a little jumpy on the defensive side of things, and sometimes it results in him playing out of position. Now, I'm sure he's cleaned it up during his time at the University of Michigan and also representing Team USA, but at the same time, it's just like if you're expecting for Luke Hughes to be our savior, I just say, like, look, it could happen – but just try to keep your expectations moderate because he's only played in a few regular season games. That's not a big enough sample size. And my thing is like, he, he doesn't uh, do well defensively, but offensively that's his bread and butter. So one of the issues that we've been having with Ryan Graves is supposed to be one of our best two way type of defensemen because he can hold down the four on defensive side of things because he did lead the New Jersey devils in defensive point shares and his plus minus was tops on the team. And in addition to that, Ryan Graves also has the capability of scoring, but obviously he gets most of his points via an assist. So that wasn't really going too well for Ryan Graves during the course of the playoffs because sometimes when he was out there defensively, the New Jersey Devils looked a little exposed. They looked very vulnerable. Now, putting Luke Hughes into the mix, I don't think it helps the Devils defensively, but maybe just maybe offensively, you can get something out of Luke Hughes. Now, Amanda Stein spoke with Jack, and here's what Jack said in regards to what uh, his brother can bring going into game three. He said, we need puck movers. We need guys that can transport the puck out of the zones. We've been missing a bit of the first two games. Luke can be a threat on the rush. He'll transport us, get us up and out of the zone fast. Like I said, Luke Hughes, great offensive player, but I don't think that's the issue for Devils. I don't think it's a skill issue. I think it's more of a physicality issue. So we're going to talk about that momentarily in segment two. But before we continue, as you guys know, I'm a big NASCAR guy. So when I heard about eBay Motors, I was just through the roof because that means I can tinker with my car just a little bit. So for a championship team, it's all about making sure that the player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, Head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right and it's the first time around. Just add your ride to the My Garage and look for the green check to know where the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's the easy way to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, get the right fit, and get the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. So in this segment, I'm going to highlight some of the issues that I've been noticing throughout these past couple games for Devils against the Hurricanes. And then I'm going to talk about how they can resolve it. So like I said in segment one with Luke Hughes, Luke Hughes is going to change up the dynamic a little bit and maybe you can generate a little bit more offense. But the main thing that I want people to know is that I don't think it's a skill issue for the Devils. I think it's more of a physicality issue. So the main example that I used in one of my more recent episodes was that for Timo Meyer, uh, Timo Meyer did not suit up in game one because he was re still recovering from his nose injury that he took at the hands of Jacob Truba in game seven of the first round. Now, in that game, similar to game two, the Devils absolutely got destroyed. But the main uh, glaring issue that I saw was that the Devils just had no physicality. They didn't really have that much of a presence. 
And you really saw it in that third line. So Sharon Govich and Boquist were playing because Timo Meyer was out. They were both playing, just, just to make that clear. Now, the thing is, is like no disrespect to Boquist or Sharon Govich. I know I sometimes say that Sharon Govich is inconsistent. And usually I have good things to say about Boquist. But the thing about Timo Meyer is that he just brings that physicality to the roster. And that was dearly missed in game one. And that's one of the reasons why I was so ecstatic when the Devils traded for him in the first place. Because not only can Timo Meyer score efficiently, he can also bring that sort of physicality, that grit, that determination. And when Tom Fitzgerald went out and said, like, we're not done, we're going to try to find another grit player. I was like, look, even if you don't find that grit player in which they did end up later finding Curtis Lazar, I said Timo Meyer in my eyes is enough just because Timo Meyer he had more hits alone than uh, some of the other Devils players combined. So including like Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, Jesper Brad, and a few others, you combine all those players, Timo Meyer still had more hits. So the point I'm trying to make is that what I saw in game two was that the New Jersey Devils were asserting themselves early a lot more. And the numbers don't lie. According to CJ Turturro, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, but he put out the expected goals in all situations for the Devils throughout the course of the first period and if you noticed early on the New Jersey Devils were neck and neck with the Carolina Hurricanes at one point the Devils were out shooting the Carolina Hurricanes and the main difference in game two versus game one is that the Devils were able to get more shots on Frederick Anderson they even had a five on three advantage albeit they only had like 20 seconds to capitalize on it but they were still putting themselves in better positions to possibly score and Dougie Hamilton he had like one shot attempt go in and out of the post and that kind of sucked but digressing a little bit early on in the game what was the x factor for the Devils I'd say it was Timo Meyer because what I noticed for Timo Meyer is that he's using his big body he's using his physicality to get down low and get in front of net to try to uh, either clean up the rebound or try to redirect it on in off a off of someone's shot attempt that's what I noticed in game two and that was sort of missing in game one. So, like I said, does the outcome change because Timo Meyer's out there? Probably not because it's not on one player to make that big of a differential. But the thing is, like, the Devils were creating better looks for themselves, at least early on in period number one. And Timo Meyer sort of plays a factor in that. So the main point I'm trying to make, guys, is that physicality is the main issue for Devils. Because, like I said early on, they were able to outshoot the Carolina Hurricanes at one point. But another issue that the Devils are running into at the hands of the Carolina Hurricanes is a Hurricanes' excellent job at forechecking. And another thing that the Devils just don't seem to have any answer for is that the Carolina Hurricanes, similar to what Kevin Ball was doing in the first round against the New York Rangers, was that uh, Kevin Ball was treating the Rangers like they were a bunch of rag dolls. But look in game number two, another issue in which Jesper Fast, he – shoved Ryan Graves into the board and Graves did get hurt as a result. And like I said, even though Graves was able to continue in the game, it still obviously affected them because he's not good to play in game three. And then just bury Coco Konami and don't let uh, him scoring a couple times in the previous game, distracted from the fact that he basically like jumped in, in the air to knock down Nico Heischer. Like that, that was not a clean hit in my eyes, but I don't know how the referees missed that, but it, it just goes to show you that the Carolina Hurricanes, whether it's clean or dirty, they're going to be going full force at the New Jersey Devils. Also worth mentioning that Coco Konami did not score in round one against the New York Islanders. So that's a little frustrating. But uh, going back to Amanda Stein, she spoke to Nico Heischer post game, And here's what Nico Heischer had to say in regards to how the Devils have been playing. He said, what bothers me the most is that we just get out battled. It's the playoffs. We should be really pissed off right now. I like that answer. But the main issue that I have for the New Jersey Devils is that I get, yes, I guess they're not playing pissed off. But the fact is, you cannot just rely on your skill to try to wiggle yourself out of this snafu. Because the main difference between the Rangers and the Hurricanes, in my eyes, at least from my perspective, is that how did the Devils lose three games to the Rangers? I felt as though the Devils just got outwitted. So what did the Rangers do? They forced the Devils to go on to the penalty kill. Then you get someone like Chris Kreider to score on the power play. Or you see that the New York Rangers, they were there were a couple plays in which they were able to expose their defense and they were able to get wide open opportunities on Vitek Vanacek in the first two games. 
So basically what I just saw in the Ranger series was that the Devils, unfortunately, they just fell victims to just some good play calling by the Rangers. But when you saw the Devils win, what were the Devils doing? They were tightening up their defense and it forced the New York Rangers to change up their play calling because they acknowledge this on the ESPN broadcast because the Devils like to play East to West style type of hockey. That's what the Rangers tried to do in games three and four. And it didn't work. The only line that consistently gave the Devils trouble at one point was the kid line when the Rangers were trying to switch up and play East-West style type of hockey. So obviously you got Kako, you got Lafreniere, you got Heidel. That was the only line that gave the Devils trouble. Now in this series against the Carolina Hurricanes, the Devils, they're trying to get out and running. And similar to what Jack Hughes said in his soundbite to Amanda Stein, he said, like, look, Luke Hughes provides this and that. And I was like, yeah, that's great and all. But the one thing you can you cannot expect from Luke Hughes, at least in my eyes, is that Luke Hughes is not going to play like John Marino. He's not going to play like Jonas Siegenthaler. He's not going to play like Kevin Ball, where he is consistently able to get, like, blocks or redirects or assert himself in the offensive end and keep the possession alive for the Devils because that's not his game. That's not what the Devils drafted him for. They drafted for him to provide some sort of offensive spark. And like I said, the main difference between the Rangers and the Hurricanes is that the Rangers were just outskilling the Devils, and then you were able to see the Devils adjust, and they were able to handle the Rangers uh, in a few games. And obviously it did go to seven, but what were the Rangers doing to try to trick the Devils, force them into the PK, and also – force the Devils to uh, just make some defensive lapses so you create good looks for yourself. As for the Carolina Hurricanes, their mindset is rough and tough, wear them down. And that's what the Hurricanes are doing. And obviously the Devils have Timo Meyer, So that's definitely a big uh, X factor for Devils, but they got to rely on some other physicality players. So it should be no surprise that Miles Wood and Nathan Bastion are the only two players in the series to score for Devils because they, they similar to um, Timo Meyer, they played that style of hockey, which is, you know, playing tough and playing physical. But when Miles Wood scored in yesterday's game against the, the Hurricanes, that was the safe face. The game was already decided at that point, but I love the fact that the Devils didn't get shut out. That's that's the only positive takeaway I can uh, use from those first two games. Yeah, so the, the, the first two games, it's a little different from the Rangers. The point I'm just trying to make is that the Devils, it's not so much a skill thing. I think it's so, so much a physicality thing, which is why the Hurricanes are able to do what they're able to do despite missing a few key players. So how do the Devils respond to this? Well, I think Lindy Ruff is trying his best to uh, make sure that the physicality and the skill is a little more spread out. So according to Sam Kassan, he tweeted out the line shufflings made by Lindy Ruff to insert Luke Hughes into the lineup and also just try to see if he can once again pair some physicality with skill. And here's what he did. So for the top line, it's Andre Palat, Nico Heischer, and Jesper Bratt. Then for the second line, Eric Halla, Jesper Boquist, Tomas Tatar. Then the third line, and this is the most interesting one, and this got people trending the name Jack Hughes on Twitter. You got Timo Meyer, Jack Hughes, Dawson Mercer. Then that fourth line, the BMW line, Miles Wood, Michael McLeod, Nathan Bashan. Then for the defensive side of things, Jonas Siegenthaler, Dougie Hamilton, Luke Hughes, Damon Severson, Kevin Ball, John Marino. Now, I like this for the Devils, and a lot of people were actually pushing for Jack Hughes to be paired alongside with Timo Meyer. but uh, Jack Hughes being on the bottom six, I, I'll be honest, that was not on my bingo card, but that is the right move for Lindy Ruff because at the end of the day, uh, like Amanda Stein tweeted out like a month or two ago, just because, just because you play on the third line, it doesn't mean you're going to get the second amount at least of ice time amongst the fours. That's not how that works, but... I like this uh, sort of line combination to start off the game because you pair alongside Jack Hughes with Timo Meyer, someone who's physical and someone who can quote unquote protect Jack Hughes. Because remember in the previous game, in game two, Jack Hughes did end up losing a tooth, a tooth. So sorry, ladies, Jack Hughes is now uh, toothless like that dragon from uh, that DreamWorks film, but digressing a little bit, he says he's going to get it worked out, but uh he says his dental plan is kind of brutal for the time being. But uh, digressing a little bit, Jack Hughes being paired alongside with Timo Meyer, here's what I see. 
Timo Meyer can play in front of the net, and Jack Hughes can still try to use his speed to his advantage, but he could try to maneuver the puck in front of Frederick Anderson if that's who's going to be the starting goalie for the Carolina Hurricanes in Game 3, and then just try to redirect it on in with Timo Meyer. Timo Meyer can hang in front of the net. Jack Hughes will still get his point, but the star players for the Devils really need to step up. So after my Game 7 reaction video, in which I uh, gave my initial thoughts on the New Jersey Devils defeating the New York Rangers in Game 7, who are my three stars throughout the course of the series? Well, I'll tell you my honorable mentions. Kevin Ball, Jonas Siegenthaler, and Andre Palat. My three stars were Jack Hughes, Eric Kala, and Akira Schmidt. Now, what, what, what do some of those players have in common? They're underdog players. They're X-factor players. And the, the, thing, the thing that concerns me for the Devils is that how much further can you push this team? Because now it's, it's not so much of a skill issue. It's a physicality issue. So the Devils are going to have to push their limits a little bit because now players are going to have to try to ruffle some feathers, are going to have to get aggressive. But the only change that I would make for Lindy Ruff is that you got to find a way to put Curtis Lazar into the lineup, quite honestly. I know I've been big on Curtis Lazar throughout the course of the playoffs, but it's so true because Curtis Lazar is not afraid to get those hits. He's not afraid to be aggressive. He's not afraid to do the dirty work. So you got to rely on some of your players like Curtis Lazar and also Eric Kala, Miles Wood, Michael McLeod, and Nathan Bastion. But the star players really got to get things going. So when when uh, Nico Heischer is telling the media, saying, he's pissed off and that he wants the, uh, the devils to perform a little bit better. I love that, that uh, answer from Nico Heischer, but there's a reason why I picked Heischer to be my MVP in the first series, because I wanted Nico Heischer to uh, not only get himself going, but get his other teammates going because he is that anchor for the offensive side of things. But Nico Heischer has not scored a goal in over a month. So that's got to change. And He's got to figure it out. He's not a finalist for the Selkie for no reason. So I shouldn't have to uh, say that for Heischer because he should be used to doing some of the dirty work because he's great on the defensive side of things. He's great on the offensive side of things. He's a great two-way player. So Nico Heischer, you have to be the example for someone like Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes, he's more focused on the offensive side of things. I'm not saying his defense is atrocious, but his main priority is to obviously score. But getting Timo Meyer into the mix and, and if the Hurricanes try to negate Jack Hughes on the four check or they try to uh, knock him off the puck, wherever the case might be, you get some help in Timo Meyer. So I like that that mindset for the Devils going into game three, which is now it's desperation mode. Now you got to change things up. Now you got to tr- just uh, throw the book out the window and just try to adjust the best way you can. And that's what Ryan Ovazinski said when he appeared on the show in the previous episode, which was, He expects for Lindy Ruff to do that, and look what Lindy Ruff is doing right now. Now, to wrap things up, who is my pick to be the starting goalie for Devils in Game 3? Honestly, I don't think it matters either way, because if the team in front of whoever is in in, in net for Devils doesn't perform, whoever's in front of them, it, it really doesn't matter. You can have Mackenzie Blackwood in net. And if the Devils aren't able to uh, just match the physicality for the Hurricanes or at least come somewhat close to it, then it's going to be curtains either way. But if I had to pick, I'd say it's going to be Vitek Vanacek because Akira Schmidt has been subbed out the last couple of games. And Akira Schmidt, he's had a great story. He's had a great story arc during the course of the playoffs. But similar to when you make that goalie switch, you have to switch it up throughout the course of the lineup. And that includes the goalie position. So it's not on Akira Schmidt as to why the Devils are in this situation because, let's face it, Akira Schmidt has been making a lot of high-danger saves. He's been making great A saves. At at some point, it seems like he is the only one that's uh, trying to keep the Devils in the game at some point because he has to make like four or five saves per possession. But at the same time, I think you have to put Vitek Vancheck in, not because Akira Schmidt is bad, but you have to just try to switch it up a little bit, similar to what happened in the first series when Akira Schmidt started in game three as opposed to Vitek Vanacek. And similar to what Christy Flannery said uh, when she appeared on the show not too long ago, when you have some reliable goalies in Akira Schmidt and Vitek Vanacek, who cares? So that's my mindset. What? And I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. So what do you expect from Luke Hughes in his playoff debut? What do you think has been going wrong for the Devils? Because like I said, it's the forechecking 
and also the physicality and a lot of other metrics that the Hurricanes are doing that are just negating the offensive attacks for the Devils. And then what are your thoughts on the line changes for the Devils going into game three? Nothing is set in stone, but it, you can make a safe bet that we're going to see something drastic from Lindy Ruff. So here's your guys' thoughts. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at TreyMatt4 or the show's Twitter page at Locked on Devils. As for today's episode, that's all time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. Catch you guys in the next episode. Here's to hoping for a two-to-one deficit that the Devils have to work out of after game three. Here's to hoping.